Hello and welcome to another episode of The Wave, the wonderful Alberni Valley experience. I'm your host, Don Texan, coming to you live from the unceded territories of the Hoopachesant and the Deshot peoples, where we are privileged to live, love, and play. But today, in my episode, in this episode of The Wave, we, I have a special guest. Who, uh, he's a, a local artist, an indigenous artist here in Port Alberni. And I went to visit his gallery. It is just amazing. You should go and visit one time. It's, he's in the Asti Gallery on the uh, highway all to Tofino. Anyway, I won't talk about that much because I want him to tell you all about it. Here to tell you about his wonderful Alberni Valley experience is Timaa. I hope I pronounced it right, but he will correct me as I introduce him now. So please welcome Timaa. Hello. Uh, right. uh, yes, correct. Um, Did I say it right? Yes, yes. Okay. My English name is Gordon Dick. Okay. So could you tell us a little bit about the story of your name? So my name was given to me by my grandparents and it was handed down for generations. And that name comes from Moachit, northern part of the island, another neutronal part of the neutronal region. And it's referencing an ex, a description of standing on a rock in the water which is referencing the, the great flood, one of the three great floods that happened on the coast here, generations oh. ago. So that name has been handed down for generations. So the, you mean to tell me the great flood, as far as I know, the, the tsunami of 1964, if I'm not mistaken, it was just one of three, you mean? No, before that. Oh, before that. I see, I see. And you told me that you are, uh, as I mentioned, we are in the Hupacheset and Hupacheset, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, Hupacheset and Teshot, uh Unceded Territories, and you are with uh, the shot. I'm Teshot, uh family, yes. Okay, and by virtue of that, you were born here in Port Alberni. That's correct. Was Port Alberni called a different name before it became Port Alberni, to your knowledge? Well, uh, Tshashat, the Tshashat people always uh, would come up and follow the salmon. So we had villages at the mouth of the river and at the, uh, at the, where they called now today the paper mill dam. I see. So, and then Polly's Point as well. Okay. So, and, um, okay. Yeah. Uh, so you were born here. So what was it like? living in Port Alberni, I mean, growing up in Port Alberni. Growing up in Port Alberni, I was very fortunate that I, you know, I had a lot, I was outdoors a lot. We have, you know, great mountains and, and uh, the lakes and we're just from the river and then the hour and 30 minutes, you're out in the Broken Group Islands. So I spent a lot of time fishing and hunting with my grandfather, my uncle, um, my my brothers, my cousins. So um, very fortunate, very fortunate, very. Uh, I, I find the valley is a very fortunate place because we have so much, so many trails, so many mountains. Uh, just in a short time, even today, you can kind of get to some areas that are quite isolated and. As I've said before, you know, it's, it's nice so you get out to nature and then just hear just nature and even maybe just your own heartbeat if you're climbing up a steep mountain and steep bank. Um, so, yeah, it's it's great. Oh, that's, I see you are coming, uh, doing this interview right now at your gallery. And I would like to speak about that because the next question is, what are you doing? What is your... Uh, involvement here in Port Alberni. So you are an artist. Would you consider yourself a mixed media artist or just uh, a sculptor? Well, I'm. I just consider myself an artist in the sense of I'm open to. Well, I started in precious metals, uh, copper, oh. gold, engraving, a little bit of repose, um, and then I always planned on and always enjoyed. Uh, wood carving just a little bit when I was a little boy uh, watching my grandfather 
carve, but my career is a is an artist, and I own an art gallery, mm -hmm. gallery studio that I've now operated for over twelve years in the valley here. I see. Yes, I went to that gallery. It's such a beautiful like. You just go in there. It's it's so peaceful and so so many beautiful pieces. Now you are your gallery is called the Aztec. Did I say that correctly? Aztec a gallery. Uh, a Aztec. Aztec. The Aztec gallery. Could you tell us a little bit about the name of the gallery first before we talk about the gallery itself? So Aztec. That that was a name that my grandparents chose, and you know they talked about it and they chose for me, and it's it's a once again it's a description of. Uh, you know, like my name, it's a description or even Sishat is a me introducing like I come from. It's a, it's a so Utsik is a description of you're doing, you're doing to, you're creating to the best of your ability. You're good with your hands. Mm -hmm. at, at that moment, you're doing your best you can at that moment. So what led you into this uh, craft or this vocation, if you want to call it that, being an artist, and uh, especially on the sculpture, the wood carving that you've, you've been doing lately? Uh, you, when you grow up and there's um, going to family gatherings and pot launches up and down the island, um, you, you, just automatically, I was um, very taken with the headdresses, the regalia, the shawls, the vests, mm -hmm. the designs on the curtain, the designs on sometimes the drums. Um, so it was always, it was always a, you know, when I had a moment, I would draw and uh, just very, very taken with the the uh, designs and the it very it's uh, quite interesting how it looks very simple but it's very intricate in a lot of ways and it's very for Neutronoth it's very uh, regionally just uh, a regionally signature for mm -hmm. the art. Well, I, I went to visit your beautiful gallery. So uh, as I understand it, as you have told me right now, that that gallery has been there for 12 years now? Correct, we're over 12 years here. And you've been uh, moving around the circles of the other artists as well. And you were involved with the uh, the project that was with that language pole or something, that totem pole? Yeah, so Tim Paul is a Heshquit artist. Mm -hmm nation of Neutronoff territory uh, and he lives and resides in the valley and he has for over 20 years. Uh, I've been very fortunate to ha have him share uh, some of his gift and knowledge with me and uh, been a student a number of times on projects and then now you know when this was taken shape he asked if I was available and I I Put in some time and then I but I did share with him that I have a um, number of commitments in front of me as well so yeah I, I worked on that as well and I was fortunate to put in some time on that uh, so uh, has the project been completed so far the what was it called again I forget what, it was about this tree this big tree that had been uh, that fell or something and then they decided to make it a big totem pole or something like that yeah so so um, that there's still a little bit of um, there's still some pieces uh, to be fitted but that's best to talk to Tim Paul or or um, Cecil Dawson are the are the two that are the lead on that uh, Tim Paul's the lead artist on that he's it's his uh, as we say, he he's holding the pencil. <laughs> yeah, so I'm curious about that thing. So you artists are very creative and very imaginative. What is the process of creating something? Like I'm sure there's a, there were a lot of pieces I saw in your in your gallery, and most of it was uh, done by you. And there was one particular piece that I was drawn to, 
and you said it was made out of elevated pine. That's the first time I have heard of such a thing, elevated pine. So does it mean your material or your wood comes from different parts of the island? Yeah, it's a uh, high elevation pine. Yeah, but yeah. pine grows at high elevation. Um, so that's the what I, you know, was told when I was a little boy, going to get pine and yellow cedar, cypress, with my grandfather, red cedar. Um, but yeah, the, I, that um, I went up the mountainside with another artist and a good friend of mine. So John. Uh, John, a good friend of mine, and then Kelly Robinson, the other artist, who actually was in the gallery when you stopped by. Um, uh -huh. So he's a new channel, uh, a new hawk artist, and uh, he's he's represented the gallery over the years um, with his uh, wood carving, as well as his painting on canvas, as well as his precious metal uh, engraving um, jewelry. I see. Well, I saw so many interesting pieces, like I said, when I was there in your gallery. I would like you to share with us, if you don't mind, like the process of create, creating a piece. Like, do you have it in your head first? Do you have it in a dream? Or do you get inspiration from nature or for somebody? Like, for example, the the swan that I that had no price because she's just for a special person. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about, about that? Like, how did the swan come into creation? Well, so a lot, a lot of the designs are my actual cultural roots and my upbringing from my grandparents and my uncles. Um, so they have significant meanings coming from the family and from our region, from our nation. Um, the, the special one that you see in there that uh, is for my partner, uh, that swan, that's just, uh, a, you know, she, she loves trumpeter swans and, uh, you know, she's, she's very, she's very kind and gentle, but very protective over her children. So it's, uh, it's um, kind of uh, power, powerful, but soft uh, mm -hmm. representation. So it, it's, uh, it's, she, she'll, she'll be happy when she receives it. So. Oh, oh, she doesn't know about it. It's a surprise. She did see, and she, uh, she was very happy. She was moved, very moved by it. So, I see. Yeah. Well, uh, as far as I uh, recall, part of your wonderful Alberni Valley experience is uh, the latest addition to your family. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, uh, sure. Um, my partner and I had a little girl uh, 10 weeks ago. So, um, yeah, the valleys that, you know, I grew up here for most of my, most of my childhood. I did move away for a few years, but I always um and every moment i got long weekends spring break summertime i would always come back and uh so yeah the valley is a great place to you know go outdoors with a hike or a walk um, a lot of trails a lot of you know swimming swimming locations creeks and rivers and lakes um so yeah my our daughter will be very uh very outdoors because uh, <laughs> I are very outdoor individuals. My my partner she loves uh, paddle boarding and hiking and and uh, swimming. So, well, more of a dip. <laughs> dip now, I'm, another thing I'm curious about is you mentioned uh, a lot of other artists, and so what is the art community like here in Port Alberni? The the art community in the valley here is very. Mm -hmm very very diverse from and we have regional artists like from Tshot from and then we expand from new channel uh different new channel communities villages that live in the valley here and then we have um, neighboring nations quag youth nations um, that are good friends of mine that i talk to daily and and uh that reside in the valley here and then we have Everyone else that, you know, um, you know, Tomash is a great artist, as I mm -hmm. mentioned, who you know and met. Um, uh, David Parsonishi um, is a sculptor as well. He's, he's great. Uh, I'm a fan of what he does. Um, uh, Shane Lloyd, another artist, a young guy that's done some schooling in art, and he's done murals and 
such things. Oh, I, on. I met Shane. I know Shane. And, but uh, yeah, Kelly Robinson, Eric Glendale, Kevin Cramner, Robin Rorick, you know, these are Tim Paul, Patrick Amos. They're, you know, there's, there's many, many uh, artists in the Valley here that uh, are career artists um, that of a, in my, my opinion of a high caliber uh, of uh, quality of what they do and what they create um, in number of mediums. Well, that's very interesting that, yeah, I do realize that Port Alberni is teeming with so much talent and so much creative people here. Yeah, as you said, there are uh, career artists and they're all here in Port Alberni. It's such a blessing and it's definitely a wonderful addition to the Alberni Valley experience. Now, what yes. I was going to ask you is um, uh, when I was in the, uh, the uh, when I dropped by for a visit uh, in your gallery, there was this... Uh, a uh, young man, I guess he's a young man compared to me, <laughs> who just moved to the valley. So I'm just uh, curious, he was asking me, or he was asking us, did he make the right decision? So what would you say to people who just came here? Like, uh, what did you tell him? Like, he was asking, like, did I make the right move to Port Alberta? I'm, I'm sure he, he did. In my mind, he does. But, like, what did you tell him about Port Alberta? Well, I, I told him before he actually moved here because he's actually a... He's actually a, a an uncle to my my son, my older older child. I see. Um, and he, but he never really uh, spent much time on the island. He did spend some time in Nanaimo, and uh, but he grew up in uh, Bella Coola on his mom's roots, his mom's side of his family. And he uh, he knows he made the right decision because um, he's just always you know, awestruck basically in regards to how many lakes and rivers and, you know, he goes just, he goes just a little drive out the, out the hills up, you know, down the road and he's, he's in nature and uh, he loves, he loves nature. He, he, he grew up outdoors like, like myself and, and he's feels fortunate that his, his younger um, son, younger than my boy is, uh, mm -hmm able to go and enjoy that with him, uh, go and hike into, you know, uh, some of the waterfalls, uh, Weiner Falls and, and some of the other little lakes and so forth uh, on doing some trail walking and, and, and gathering, you know, uh, alder because alder is a beautiful material that carve that you could carve. Um, Kelly is one of the artists that represented, has, has represented the gallery and still represents the gallery. Um, for years and he carves alder and red cedar yellow cedar um, and then engraves in silver and gold the precious metals so um, and he's yeah he's I think he's very happy that he's moved here and I think he was just kind of wanted to see how your response was when he asked that question <laughs> Well, my son would always be the enthusiastic. Oh, welcome to the Alberta Valley experience. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, he, I'm sure he's going to be very happy. He's in for a wonderful Alberta Valley experience. Thanks to you and thanks to the other artists. I'm very curious now about the community of artists that we have here, right here in Port Alberni. And uh, how has the response of the community been towards the community of the artists? Have they been supportive? Have they been accepting? Yeah, there's, there's support, um, there, uh, and this is just my opinion in a sense of kind of America and North America, Canada and the U S in a sense of, um, there's so many talented artists of many, many uh, nationalities. Um, but when I, I've spent some time in, Germany and in Italy, and especially in Italy, you see pieces that are 500 years old, and then you walk two blocks, and then there's something that was put in there that's, you know, so 500 year old pieces out of bronze or stone, um, and then you go down the road two blocks, and there's something that was put in a year ago, two years ago, and it's very, abstract the, the public art in Europe is uh, very uh, prominent it's very in you look at 
um, the artists in Europe look are looked at as that's a career that's a very uh, important role in the community whereas you know even here there's still kind of like well you know it's a craft or it's a you know or or there's somewhat some you know a question of with a little bit of surprise can you make a living off of this mm -hmm. um whereas like i say there's many talented artists and i don't know if there's you know maybe if there's a little bit more of a call from the communities up and down the island that um you know say well you know it'd be great to have more artwork in a park or um, I don't know, then that's, you know, I, I'm, it might be biased coming from me because I'm an artist, but I, I, I want to create things that have a good feeling that, um, and have people enjoy it or, or maybe they don't enjoy it, but you know, I'm hoping that it gives off a good feeling and that they, they enjoy looking at it or visiting it or sitting with it or taking a photo of it, um, or maybe even my my real hope is that you know the generations that follow you know when i look over my shoulder you know where are the 18s and the 20s you know young men and women of are they picking up a paintbrush or a carving knife um so you know i want to create things that just you know we're, we're all in a rush society yeah. is in a rush and I, I kind of have a, a, you know, my own phrase that I, I just say, well, you know, it's our island face. You know, you, you can come from Vancouver or Seattle or wherever and you, you know, you, everyone's in that rush of, you know, go, go, go. And then you get to the island and I've had people say, oh, yes, you get to the island and it's just like the roads are less busy. You know, people aren't honking or as impatient. And I'm like, well. I said, I like to think that we have a, we have a better pace on the island. Oh, yes. We definitely have a different vibe, a different pace, uh, a more relaxed and more time to enjoy the moment of life, the moments of life. And I think that's what an artist has an edge over the ordinary person because the ordinary person is just like, you know, just do this, do this, do this. And if you stop to think about it is there really meaning in what we're doing but for the artist there's so much meaning in what you do there's so much there's a story behind every piece there's a meaning there's symbolism there's there's history there's tradition it's all in that one piece and it, it's just so wonderful to be in that that kind of mind space right so uh as uh that leads me to my next question like as an artist here in Port Alberni, what would you like to see more of, like in terms of art and community development? Well, I, I would really like to see, you know, I would like to see more art um, that is publicly prominent. And, you know, it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm thankful that you're doing this because, you know, a lot of people travel through Port Alberni with not really stopping to enjoy Port Alberni. Um, and I think, you know, like I say, we have, we have so much to offer. And um, if we take, uh, you know, take some time to, to really look at, you know, and still in my opinion, it's a short time frame, but, you know, two and five and 10 year, 10 years down the line, what are we going to, how are we going to shape as a community? Mm -hmm. You know, um, what is going to be prominent in Port Alberni? Um, so, so you know, as I shared earlier, I I want to create things that have people uh, make them enjoy enjoy looking at it, uh, just have a, a good feeling or you know, you're going to smile, um, or, or, you know, or even just questions, you know, what, what does it represent? What does it mean? Um, so, uh, public art, but also community building art, like, Oh, that's a beautiful term. Yes. Community building art. Yeah. So, so that would be, that would be, that would be great to see kind of, 
start to gain some traction or um, some momentum of, of looking at that um, for our community. That is great. That's the first time I've heard it, but it's such a beautiful concept, community building art, because art does bring uh, the community together and it does like make you think. Thought provoking art. <laughs> That's always a beautiful thing. Okay, I'm, we're almost out of time, so I gotta go through the rapid fire questions that I usually do with all my guests. So here we go. Let's go to, uh, sorry, I call you, sorry, I call you Gordon or Timaa? <laughs> I like that better name, <laughs> Timaa. All right, uh, let's go. Uh, living in Portal Bernie makes me feel like? Uh, relax, fortunate. Okay. That's a good one. And next question is the people, maybe in your case, particularly the artists, or, but let's just say the people. The people in Port Alberni are? Uh, they're, they're courteous. Mm -hmm. Courteous. Okay. And, uh, okay. Yeah, for the most okay. part, friendly. Okay, very good. Yeah, that is so true. Number three, our next question. In a word or a phrase, I would describe Port Alberni as? Um, uh, it's still lush. It's still lush in a sense of, in a sense of, you know, you know, I'm, I'm very walking. fortunate. <laughs> I look out my window and there's trees, there's green. You know, it's still busy, like, there, you know, I'm along the Pacific Rim Highway, but it's, you know, I have green, you know, I've, I've been to Europe, a few places, like I mentioned, and I've been to New York and down in the States, and, you know, it's, the concrete jungle really makes you appreciate the island. Oh, oh um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> the concrete jungle, oh the most dead scene I can imagine right now. All right, next question is, uh, when people ask me what it is like to live in Port Alberni, I say. Again, we, we got it. We got, uh, we have, we have the mountains, we have streams, we have lakes and creeks and the ocean, you know, it's, it's, uh, I always just say we're, 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 I do comment they were spoiled. <laughs> we're spoiled by Mother Nature. <laughs> uh, and if you okay. take the time to enjoy it and make the time to enjoy it. Okay, this next question applies to your uh, friend Kelly, if I, uh, if I remember his name right, right? What, when he first came here, what would be the first three places you would take him around to? Like, if you have a visitor, he's visiting Port Alberni, he wants to see the sites, where would you bring him? Oh, well, the, you know, go to the, Cape Mill Dam to, to shot there to the okay. salmon run, but you can swim there. It's great swimming. Uh, you know, if you go up the mountains, we went up the mountains to go in and, you know, we've harvested some alder. We harvested, you know, the, the pine, those, and those pieces were actually cut down and left there. Um, oh, so it was great to utilize that. Um, so yeah, so we, we came across them and, and uh, we able to, were able to create great pieces uh, that, in my opinion, uh, that we enjoy uh, sharing oh. with. Okay, great. And finally, um, complete this sentence. I love living in Port Alberni because? Of nature. Oh, that's a wonderful answer. Well, um, I do uh, invite our viewers to uh, come to your uh, gallery. So your gallery is called the Atsic. Did I say it right? I keep it for now. Could, I just, you, could you say it for me? What is the name of your gallery again? Atsic, right? Or Aztec? Atsic. Atsic. Okay. So the Atsic gallery. And Atsic means the ability to create with your hands. Like you're, you're, good, you're good with your hands. You're good at creating with your hands. Okay, so the Asset Gallery is where? It's a 7133 Pacific Rim Highway. Mm -hmm. so as you're in the Alberni Valley and you just get to the 
uh, historical orange bridge, which is gray. <laughs> historical orange bridge, okay. Uh, and that's crossing the Somas, Somas River. Uh, I'm two and a half kilometers past that. Just okay. down the cool part of Port Elburn here. And do you have a website or a Facebook page that, that they can visit and take a look at the art pieces? Yeah, we have a Facebook page uh, uh, for Utsik Facebook page as well as the website Utsik, so A H T S I K at gmail.com. Okay, perfect. Do you have an Instagram? I have a few pieces on Instagram. I'm there's there's one one uh, one assistant that does all that social media part. So uh, I okay. focus on artwork. Okay, okay, that's great. Well, thank you for taking the time to be on the wave. That's all the time we have. So uh, so far, I do intend to like visit the gallery again and maybe get a piece or two. Thank you, Gordon, for being on the show. In the meantime, this is your host, Don Texan, saying we'll catch you next time on the wave.